stay in the bus. These are the 43 students, how they were, how they were announced by the police officers in Guerrero. The state of Guerrero is located in Mexico. Um, this, this state is one of the most violent states that there is in Mexico. It is really corrupted and has a lot of violence. Growing up in the city of Tijuana, located as well in Mexico, I know that there has been a lot of drug trafficking and a lot of violence. Throughout my speech, I want to analyze how the 43 students from, from the Yosinapa were kidnapped. And I want to say how this arose, how it arose, how this, excuse me if I don't, how this, this, this problem arose, who was in it, and, and where it stands in today. In September 2016, 2014, wait, my God. In September 20, 26, 2014, the students of Ayusnapa were heading to Guerrero, where they were ambushed in their way of getting there. When they were when they were getting there, they were ambushed by 22 policemen from Guerrero. The reason why this was sent was because the mayor from Guerrero sent them to stop, sent the policemen to stop them because because they were gonna go and um, they were gonna go attack the presidential the, the campaign of his own wife, his wife known as Maria Maria his Maria de los Angeles. According to Vice News, one of the one of the one of the students, when they were being ambushed, one of the survivors, that he was able to escape from the policeman, said that they were screaming, that they were screaming to them, to the cops, stop, we don't have guns, leave us alone. Unfortunately, this did not work. So, when this occurred, the president, known, the president of Mexico, known as Peña Nieto, <laughs> Um, didn't do anything to stop this. Why? Because something more, something more powerful than just the even the president is controlling the president. There is known as drug trafficking. The drug, the drug, tra the drug tra trafficking lords actually control most of the state of Mexico. Meaning that um, the wife of the mayor, Jose Luis Barca, is actually one of the daughters of a drug trafficking lord. And this is proven by one of the websites that has more than one million views called the Guardian website. It has been it has been proven that she is one of the of the daughters of this um, lord from from Guerrero. And that is um, Jose Luis Alarca and his ex's wife, Maria. So from there, um from there, they, Peña Nieto said that he was gonna actually do something to look for these for these 43 students. Unfortunately, nothing has been done. The way um, these 43 students were actually killed and sent, um, their ashes were, they were killed, burned, and then their ashes were sent to the river where there's no evidence to be found. From from then to now, from where, from where this case stands now, is that even investigators from all over the world, even from America and from Argentina, have tried to help out the Mexican, the Mexican government, but unfortunately not even the Mexican government wants their help because they know that if they come to Mexico, they will know and they will find out the truth about this incident. According, according to LA Times, throughout this, this year, 2016, it has been two years since this incident and it, she, this in reporter, Interviewed one of the one of the mothers of a family of a family member that was her son. That was one of the part of the 43 students that got lost. She was crying and she said, "This is impossible. Why is this happening?" The reason she was like, "I want my why well, want my son back." So with this, we we know that the family has been has been going through a lot of pain. A lot of protests, a lot of protests still occur even up to this day in Guerrero. Now that I told you how this incident happened, what, how it happened, who was in it, and where where it stands in today, I want to leave you guys with a message that the the family members have in in today's society. Every time they protest, they say, 
Vivos se los llevaron, vivos los queremos. Meaning, you guys took them alive, we want them back alive. 